Hello everyone. DM Havoc here. Welcome back to Rules Talk slash Tales from the Table of Havoc. This one is a bit of both and I think it's kind of funny because, well, the this is how things go. Sometimes you tell a story to make a point, but the point is going to... It, 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 it's a crossover. <laughs> so, critical fails. I think I've touched on this before, but... Let me give you a good, proper... Uh, look into how I handle critical failure. Now, in any RPG, a critical fail is bad, obviously. Not only do you miss your shot or fail at whatever you're gonna try to do, but it's detrimental in some way. Either a minor inconvenience or, you know, a major inconvenience. So, where did I put my coffee? So, <laughs> either way, a critical fail is exactly that. It is a failure and it is critical. Cold brew coffee for the win, by the way. So in D&D, you're swinging your great sword at this kobold, and you miss. Whoosh! That's it. You know, you missed. If you roll a one, or in AD&D where it's a roll under, if you roll a 20, you miss. However, something happens. One of many variables could come into play, and it is always up to the GM or the DM to decide what that failure is. For me, I'm not a huge fan of, like, always massive damage. Uh, you, you swing forward, so it, it, you... you you swing around and something, you know, chops off your leg. No. Not always true. Not always applicable. However, it could happen that way. So, how does the DM or GM handle such a situation? Well, you swing your great sword, you go right over the kobold's head, and you lose your grip and your great sword goes flying off into the distance. It goes, roll dice, 20 yards. Or, you know, it depends how heavy the sword is, how good your swing is, what your strength is, what your dexterity is, so on and so forth. Not always do you lose your grip. Sometimes it's, it, the weight of it and the, the, the force of the swing spins you around and you lose your balance and you fall flat on your ass. Thus knocking you prone and all the penalties associated with. If you're shooting a, a, a bow and arrow, you know, first off, don't shoot an arrow into melee because the way old school DMs do the, the, the shooting into melee thing is, well, one, you're shooting at one mass. This mass is everyone. If you hit or exceed the, you know, if you exceed the AC of the creature you are, are, are shooting for, you hit the creature, obviously. If you miss, well, where does it go? Now, that is where, one, the DM has to look at degrees of failure. If, say, the creature is, 
is an AC-12 creature. Say it's a, a basic human with a little bit of armor. And you roll a 10. That's your total, uh, you know, your total roll. You miss, but not by much. So, which direction? Now that's where the DM rolls the dice. Now, something like that, it's... You fail by a couple, so it goes, you know, near where you were aiming, but it may hit one of your guys. That sort of thing. <laughs> but if you're shooting a bow and you crit fail, you break your bow, you break the string, the arrow doesn't leave it, but it smacks you in the face, or it droops to your feet, or, you know, it, it, it goes forward, but is caught by something and stabbed you in the chest. You know, there, there's things, there's calculations, there's, there's so many variables. Now, do they always have to cause something big? No, they don't. A good DM will always look at the situation and see what would what would affect the situation appropriately. Well, He swings his warhammer at this dwarf's head, misses, and seeing as it's a downward motion, the, the weight of the hammer, the force of the throw, it flips him and he falls forward. Okay, that's a possibility. Or, he's surrounded. He goes for the guy in front of him. He Swings, he misses, it turns him around, and he uppercuts the motherfucker behind him with the hammer. Now, how does that happen? Because, well, it's a critical fail. It, one, it spins him around. Now, this dwarf, if he has the proper class and stats, can get a backstab. However, Dude just dealt full force damage to this guy's chin. See what I'm saying? So here's where the story comes in. Last night, as of filming, uh, we, the Havoc uh, RP group, uh, Guild, started playing a new game. We are playing Fallout PNP. It's the uh, free Fallout PNP that is. Uh, you can find it by Google. It follows uh, the stats and all that from Fallout 1, 2, and Tactics. And a lot of what is, a lot of the material used in it is from the Fallout Bible. Written by Chris Avalon. Who is fucking amazing. Because, well, you know, he, he's one of the creators of one of the greatest series ever. And, you know, say what you will about Bethesda and, you know, all the newer games. They didn't have Chris Avalon. So there. But, we started out and we were playing in a location called Homestead, which is just south of Carson City. Well, in context of the game, a little south of New Reno, because Carson City is the Carson Crater, essentially. There's nothing there. Um, the, the Long story short, the characters, the, the, the player characters, have to chase after a transport van, which is a hijacked, uh, a hijacked uh, a caravan uh, transport. And on it are a bunch of bandits and some of the kids that the bandits have, uh, you know, kidnapped. So, they find out that someone in Homestead has a chrysalis. 
they quickly repair it. It's not great uh, because, you know, it, it rattles. It's a rough ride. It, it, it's not going to work as you know well as it should. <clears throat> but that make, made it more interesting. They chased after it. This transport's going kind of slow because it's big, it's bulky, and it's on mainly dirt. Uh, packed dirt, but dirt nonetheless. So, they catch up to it, and they fire off a couple of shots. Well, one of the characters critical failed. Now, in the Fallout PMP, there is a chart that you consult when a critical fail happens. Sorry, I'm wondering if J.J. Abrams is now directing my, my video, because that is some heavy lens flare. If so, hello Mr. Abrams, I don't like your work. Anyway. So they take a couple of shots, one of the character's critical fails, and uh, here's where I was. There's a D10 chart for a critical fail. Everything from a knockdown, loss of AP, um, ammunition problems, your gun jams, uh, an anvil could fall out of the sky and hit your character over the head, ignoring all armor. In this case, the weapon exploded and dealt, I think it's 3d10 damage to all within a certain range. <coughs> Everything in range was everyone in the vehicle. And it killed one character, well, dropped into zero hit points, so, but still, killed one, everyone else barely made it. But the shock of it made me have to uh, make, you know, I, I had to tell the driver, I need a piloting role. No, failed. But, not a critical fail, but still by enough degrees of failure to land the car in a ditch. Now, everyone was at 6 health, uh, 6 HP or less. Yeah. Car went into ditch, and everyone died, essentially. Now, if I was an asshole DM, everyone's dead! Bring new character sheets next time! But I couldn't. Why are you telling me five minutes left? I, I, I couldn't bring myself to that point. So, everyone's dead! Chapter over! Bye, guys. See you next time. Oh, by the way, all your characters woke up in a hospital, and yeah. Bye! <laughs> because I'm, I'm kind of an asshole DM like that. Uh, I'm storyteller. And that's where the critical fails come in for me. There was much more to this session, uh, to, to that chapter of the campaign. There was getting to the bandit camp, there was the fight with the bandits and all that. But, the critical failure actually put a perfect bookend for a, uh, a cliffhanger. And if you're a storyteller DM, or if you're a good DM at all, that's how you will use these tools. And that's what a critical failure should be, is a storytelling tool. So, thanks for watching. I know this video got a little long and a little rambly, but hey, you know, I hope you had a good time, and I hope you come back for more. If you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe, and do all that good jazz. Leave a comment below telling me what other topics you would like me to cover, because I have so many, but I want to know what you want to hear. So thanks for watching, and see you later.